making friends for God as church employees. That is the title of our devotion, if we can say, making friends for God as church employees. My name is Siri. You can call me, if you have an iPhone, it is exactly like the Siri on <laughs> iPhone. So it is, uh, uh, do not worry to call me as Siri. Well, thank you very much, Siri. You know, I have many fond memories of the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. Um, visiting uh, South Africa, being there at the division office, and visiting many countries in the division, um, traveling throughout that division. I just have sensed the fervor for witness and soul winning throughout the division. Thank you very much and uh, welcome Pastor Mark Finlay to into the SID worship, as we can say. Uh, the SID worship is um, every day because of uh, COVID-19, we have decided to have the, the worship online. And that is why it is a very great privilege to have you today with us as uh, SID employees, especially for today, as I know you are the offer of our Sabbath school lesson of this quarter, which is really a blessing for the church. Let us pray and then we can get started, okay? Okay. okay. It's so good to see you. Thank Father you so in much. heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity to spend time with my brother today. I pray that you would anoint this broadcast with your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit would attend every word, be with my brother as he asks the questions, give me the right answers, move through me by your Spirit to touch the hearts of the SID employees. Now, Lord, we love you, we want to serve you, and all we want to do is live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sometimes, as employees, Pastor, we think that our position in the church grants us a direct ticket entry to heaven, and we cease to deploy any effort to serve in our respective churches, or even we neglect, neglect or minimize as possible participating in our personal soul winning. So how, as church employees, pastor, can we find again the joy of winning souls for Jesus, for us, not because of our job? You've asked a question about division employees and witness. I want you to think of it this way. Here is a South African farmer a Zimbabwean farmer. Um, and they work from early in the morning to late at night, a farmer from Madagascar. And they are just exhausted when they come home. But yet they have a burden for souls to have a small group and give a Bible study. Here is a computer programmer, a nurse, a physician in the division, a politician in the division. They're an Adventist but they work eight hours a day, but they have such a passion for Christ. They come home, they give a Bible study, hold a lay evangelistic meeting, give out books. Are division employees any different? We work maybe f uh, through the day, but yet we are all called to be witnesses for Christ. Witness is not a special gift. It is rather a calling. God gives us to do our calling of witness. Jesus says you're the light of the world. Jesus says you're an ambassador for Christ. Jesus says you are a salt of the earth. Now to take this a step further, remember what Jesus says in, Ma in Acts chapter 20, verse 32. He says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. It's possible to work in a division office, a union office, or a conference office, and to have our own spiritual life go stale, to have our own spiritual life be flat. We go through the work almost as mechanical, perfunctory, that we would say. We go through the work, and uh, but what is it that keeps your faith alive? It is witness, soul winning. I remember some time ago uh, in my own personal life, and I'll share with you a testimony. I was working here at the General Conference and I was writing, I, and it might have been the material, the basis of the material for the very small group, the, the lesson that we'll have this week in our Sabbath school on small groups. 
And I got to thinking about that and I said, you know, Mark, do you have a small group in your home? And I had every excuse not to have one, Siri. I said, well, I'm traveling a lot. Well, I'm holding evangelistic meetings. Well, I'm ho holding seminars at the church. But I got to thinking, God, you are leading me to hold a small group. We began, my wife and I began a small group in our home. And we would have 15, 20, 25 people coming, many of them not Seventh-day Adventist. And, you know, we looked forward to those Monday nights. It just inspired us. So, you know, Acts of the Apostles, page 105, Ellen White says mm -hmm. this. It's a wonderful reference where she talks about Israel and she said, and talks about the early disciples uh, in the nation of Israel, the disciples. And she says that they forgot that strength to resist evil was best gained through aggressive service. So the early church was in that danger of forgetting that we can have strength to resist evil. So what I would say to the employees of SID, if you want a vital Christian experience, if you want a growing Christian experience, if you want to enrich your Bible study, enrich your prayer life, get involved, give a Bible study, have a small group in your home, give out literature. Not only will it do something for your community, but it'll do something for you as you grow in Christ. Thank you, Pastor Mark. So if I understand you very well, the joy is through the action. You cannot find the joy unless you are involved in the action. Thank you Ex very much, Pastor. Exactly, exactly. Joy comes in service. Joy mm -hmm. comes in ministry. Joy comes as we reach out to others to share the gospel of Christ. And we grow. That's how we grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor, Pastor Mark. I am jumping to the uh, second question now. Uh, we are living now in a society of rush. As we know, even if we are inside of this uh, pandemic, isolation and mistrust leading to less physical interactions and less care for others. So as a church employee pastor, what do you counsel me to do to reach my neighbor? In that direction, again, as a company, what do you consell the, the, the organization in SID, as SID, organizations in SID to do in order for us to reach the corporates around our building, office building, so that we don't only live because we are paid for the salary, but we live to bless the, the people around us. We have that deep desire in, in, inside of us, but uh, we would like to get the, the advice from you. What do you suggest us as employees, as organization to do in order for us to bless the organizations and the corporates, the companies around us? Well, first, I think that's a very excellent question, City. It's a practical question. I think the first thing we begin to do is pray. We pray for our neighbors. We learn their names and we learn their uh, children's names, the name of the husband, the name of the wife, and daily we pray for our neighbors. I think praying for them is the first step. We make a prayer list and begin to pray. Now, if we don't know their names, if they're corporate buildings around us, we begin to pray for the people in that building, the people that go to that IT building, the nurses that go to the hospital, the university professors that go to the university, the shopkeepers, the taxi drivers, we pray for them, that's number one. The second thing that we do is we, as we get to know our neighbors, we can call them on their cell phone. We can ask them, how are you doing? I know this is a time of isolation or it's a time of COVID-19. I just wanted to check and see how are you doing today? Do you have any prayer requests for me? We pray for them and then we ask them if they have any prayer requests. Mm -hmm. Then we think about giving them a piece of literature, the missionary book of the year that we've just, we are gonna be printing in October, the missionary book of the year called Hope for Troubled Times. It's a book that I've written and um, it deals with the COVID-19 question. And it's a very interesting, fascinating book. 
uh, talks about the ultimate vaccine, which is the gospel of Christ, talks about personal wow. protective equipment, which is prayer, Bible study, and uh, witness. It talks about uh, what happens when COVID-19 is over, the day after, the day after. It talks about the coming of Christ, uh, how to deal with worry, anxiety, and fear. So we can give them out a book, like the Missionary Book of the Year. So we give them a magazine. So I would say we pray, we call, we, we give out literature. Also, you can send a SMS message, a text message. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for you, John. Mary, I know your uh, daughter went in the hospital. I'm praying for her. So maintain that contact. Although we cannot have necessarily physical contact, we don't have to be socially distant. We, can, we might be socially separated, but we don't have to be socially distant. We don't have to be socially distant from this perspective that we can be in touch with people through social media to keep our hearts bonded with them. And there may be times too that we can go by, drop off a little food item, maybe some bread, maybe some rice. You know, you drop off something to a neighbor and give it to them as a little gift and pray with them. But keeping contact, um, inviting them to study the Bible and participate in Bible studies. I think that's, that's one of the things we can do. And they can take courses online. They can take printed courses. So keeping actively involved in their lives. Thank you very much, Pastor. So first of all, we pray, if I remember, then we need to call or send an SMS or chat. And then we need to, to, to drop some gifts to them and keep uh, interacted with them always, as you can say. Uh, I have, I think I can give that one a uh, small testimony. I have been uh, Seventh-day Adventist 20 years now, and uh, I was the first Adventist. I was like you exactly. My mother was Catholic and my, my father was Protestant. Wow. And I joined the church. I, I was just rejoicing because of that fact. But when I came here in, uh, in South Africa, and we moved to an, our house. Nine months now I was in this house. But uh, when this Sabbath school that you have uh, given me uh, us as, uh, uh, came out, I started at the lesson number two to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. And I prayed for my neighbor who, who were there. For nine months, we were not connected at all. And then the next week, this, uh, this, this, uh, the, the, the lesson about prayer came through. Then I, I, I began to pray for them. The first time for we were here, that the neighbor spoke with us. And then uh -huh. uh, that the lady came and in our house and she sent the, the daughter to, to play with my daughter. So uh, I am very thankful with this lesson. I can tell you that I was the first. I am the first, if not the second, uh, I can say, who has been placed with your lesson. So thank you very much for that practical lesson. But uh, can I go uh, further regarding the companies? We spoke about the neighbor, but what about SID as organization? What about the conference? What about the union? Do they need to do anything to reach out the government or the companies around them as well, Pastor? Sure. Each uh, division, each union, each conference can take responsibility for those companies around them. Giving out mm -hmm. literature, I think, is an excellent thing to do now. People are, they have time on their hands. They want to read. There are going to be some societies where we can still hold public evangelistic meetings. There are going to be some places in SID that are not afflicted as much with the COVID-19. And they should move right ahead with personal door-to-door -door work, house-to-house -house work, evangelistic work. You know, the three angels' messages are the message for this hour. Jesus said in Revelation 14, 6, uh, through John and the angel, I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to every nation, kindred, dung, and people. So we should not stop as an evangelistic movement during COVID-19 because we can't do it in some places. Uh, because we can't do it in every place doesn't mean we can't do it in some places. So do what you can do in the area that you're in. But there's a second aspect of this, and it's this. Mm -hmm. God's oh, never shuts a door without opening a door. 
God never shuts a door without opening a door. We have tremendous opportunities on social media today. You can have evangelistic meetings on social media. And you can have an eight-night series, a ten-night series, in, organized by a conference, organized by a union. People can watch it on their iPhone. They can watch it on their computer. Then you can organize watch parties where, for example, an elder of a church invites eight or ten people to his home to watch on their computer. Another person invites people to their home. Then you can have group leaders who contact the leaders of the watch parties. So let's suppose a conference has an evangelistic series online and mm -hmm. the speaker speaks from the conference office. Then that evangelistic meeting goes out to either a local church, a home, and then let's suppose there are a hundred of these meetings and you have a hundred elders. Then the, each elder of the church uh, directs one of these watch parties. And in some areas it's gonna work. Now some areas that don't have the technology, it's not gonna work there. But you know, Jesus made an interesting statement in the book of John when he fed the 5,000 in John chapter 6, he didn't say to Philip, what don't you have? He said, Philip, what do you have? And Philip said, all I have is five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus said, that's enough. Use what you have. Use what you have. All we need, we have. But all we have, we need. All we need, we have. But all we have, we need. And so I would say to the church at SID, Analyze your situation. Do not let COVID-19 discourage you from witness. Mm -hmm. Do what you can do. Use the loaves and fishes you have, and Jesus is going to multiply them in your hands to feed the 5,000 hungry spiritual souls. If it's literature you have, give it out. If it's lay movements and Bible studies, do them. If it's small groups, do that. If you can do public evangelism, do that. If you can't do that, lead out in evangelistic meetings online. Here in North America, mm -hmm. I was on a committee yesterday, and there are scores of evangelistic meetings that are being held online with thousands and thousands of people watching. So do what you can for Jesus. Don't sit back and do nothing. Jesus only blesses what we can do. Don't let COVID-19 uh, destroy your desire and opportunity to witness. I like your, 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 your response, Pastor. So in short, do with what you have. Exactly. In short, exactly. Thank you very much, Pastor. I am moving on uh, uh, with uh, the next question. It was very clear. We know about Jesus' call that we need to come back to our first love. It is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. But as a church employees, Within our own organization, during our service, we are regularly challenged with a lot of pressures, politics, unfairness, and even quarrel for another, uh, one another because of positions, committee decisions, and many more. Based on the Sabbath school lesson and as an offer or, uh, from the offers. Uh, personal opinion because you are the author, Pastor, how can we regain our first love? You know, what the path... Uh-huh. Uh, yes, I go ahead. Sorry, Pastor. What do you suggest us to do to refresh our commitment to God, to God in our service for Him again? And how can we focus on the mission again despite of the circumstances, circumstances around us? Thank you, Pastor. You know, the question you ask is so powerful, and it's based on Revelation chapter 2, the message to Ephesus, and I want to read that passage and spend a yes, little time please. on it. In Revelation chapter 2, the, the, the Jesus' message through John to the angel to the seven churches. The mm -hmm. first church is Ephesus. Revelation mm -hmm. 2 verse 1, it says, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his hand, and who walks in the midst of the golden candlesticks. In other words, Christ is always with his church. Verse 2, mm -hmm. I know your works and your labor and your patience, and that you cannot hear, bear those who are evil, and have tested those who say they're apostles and are not. Now notice it says, I know your works and your labor. So there is really no problem with the church at Ephesus with their works and labor. 
the word labor there is a Greek word that means they labor to the point of exhaustion. So mm -hmm. here are people that are working hour after hour. They're laboring to the point of exhaustion. They also have tested those who say they're apostles and are not. So they have pure doctrine. So there's no doctrinal heresy here that's condemned. These people have pure, true doctrine. They are defenders of the faith. They could even be denominational employees, and they are working just hard. But it says, um, and you've persevered and have patience. You've labored for my namesake. So they've labored for his namesake. You've not become weary. Nevertheless, of this against you, you've lost your first love. What happened to these people? In the work that they were doing for God, they neglected their experience with God. In the work that they were doing for the church, they neglected their relationship with the Christ of the church. So the answer, the real answer to unfairness, the real answer to church politics, the real answer to quarreling is a deep relationship with Jesus that breaks my heart so that I am able to accept the circumstances around me. I work for change, but when I don't see change coming, I don't get so caught up in the politics of that, but I learn to love those who think differently than I think. I learn to respect those who view things differently on a committee than I do. I learn to be able to focus on the thing that's most important. And there are two things in the Christian life that are absolutely valuable. One is knowing Christ, and the second is sharing Christ. Knowing Christ, sharing Christ. And so here, then, the, then Revelation 2 goes on. What do you do in your first love? How do you get it back? It says you do three things. First, remember from where you've fallen. How do you get back to your first love? You remember what it was like when you had a rich devotional life. You remember what it was like when you had a rich prayer life. You remember that first flush of faith in your life. You remember those wonderful experiences with God. So you remember that. Then what's the next thing you do? Repent. You repent that you've allowed busyness to overtake your life. You repent that you've allowed your work for Christ to take the place of Christ. And then what do you do? And it says, and do the first works, that's return. You return to that life of prayer. You return to that life of Bible study. You return to that fellowship with Christ. So there are three things to do when you lose your first love. Repent, rather remember, repent, return. Remember, repent, return. You remember from where you've fallen. You remember what it was like when you, when you knew Christ and you, and you filled your life. You Remember that. You repent of the fact that you have allowed your labors to overshadow your relationship with Christ. And you return to that first period of devotion, that sweetness you had with Christ. When Christ's love fills our heart, it will solve in five minutes most quarrels. When Christ's love fills our heart, it will solve in five minutes most divisions between people. I love so much your answer, Pastor. So you always have that very good habit of giving keywords. So the three keywords are remember, remember, repent, repent, return. Turn. That's it. So uh -huh. thank you so much. I remembered uh, as well of uh, the five keywords when I, I learned about praying with you. When, uh, uh, I think last Sabbath we, I spent with my, my wife of, uh, about the prayer that you have to have the, to set the time for prayer, then you need to set the pl place for prayer, then you need to have uh, uh, a list, uh, list of prayer, and then set a group of prayer, and I think I forgot one in the middle. Learn to pray aloud. Learn to pray yes, aloud. we need to learn to pray aloud. Yeah. Uh, I told you as well that uh, for 20 years, that question was triggering me in my mind. Shall I pray aloud or shall I pray silently because Satan is able to listen to me? But you re answered to my question 20 years later on, yeah. Pastor. And it was last Sabbath that I heard about it. So thank you so much. Remember and then repent and return. And then the uh, last 
question, Pastor, uh, not the last question, but uh, if you do not uh, mind, we would like to go to the prayer session now because uh, I think we, we have addressed already all the questions that we, we are supposed to, mm -hmm. to, do, to do today. So for the prayers, I would like to uh, request you as uh, a general conference officer as well, uh, invited during our devotion to pray for SID. So here are the, the prayer list, and I hope you have already the list with you, but I would like to read them only. So the prayer is for each and every of our churches to be able to meet its mission with success for Christ. Number two, for each and every of our employees in the entire SID to be able to fulfill the call we accepted for Christ. Number three, for each and every officer in the entire SID to use with efficiency, effectiveness, and wisdom the position and influence given, by, uh, given them by God. And then number four, for the 23 countries in SID, uh, for the gospel of Christ to prosper in them and to bring God as much as soul for the marvelous kingdom. And the last one, Pastor, because we have uh, fathers leading SID, I would like you to pray especially for them, especially for the free officers of SID, the Dr. Solomon Maposa, our president, the pastor Gideon Reneke, our executive uh, secretary, and then the pastor uh, Gomba, who is our CFO. So may you please uh, pray, lead the division in prayer because this will be broadcast as well uh, among the employees. So it will be blessing us so much that you will uh, partake in blessing us within these prayers. I will be honored to pray. Thank you, Thank let's you, pray. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to meet with my brothers and sisters in the SID today. I pray for this division in its 23 countries around the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. It's such a diverse division with people of different backgrounds, different cultures, such diversity. I pray that you would give our division officers and employees wisdom. Help them in this time of COVID-19 to look at the doors that you have opened, not the doors that Satan has shut. Amen. You've opened many doors. There are possibilities. And I just pray you, Father, that you would move powerfully by your Holy Spirit, Amen. that you would work through our officers, give them vision and creativity and wisdom. I think of each employee of SID, you know their families, you know their backgrounds, you know the struggles that they face, either health challenges, challenges with their children, you know the issues financially that they face, and I lift each one of them up to you. May they know that they're cradled in your arms, may they know that you're walking by their side, may they know that you're holding them up to strengthen them, and support them, and encourage them. I think too of the officers throughout the division. They can be in the uh, unions and the conferences, even in local churches. And Lord, they have tremendous influence. And I pray that you would keep them faithful to you. You know, it is said in scripture that gracious words flowed out of Christ's mouth. And others said that no man spoke with his authority. And the reason he spoke with such authority and the gracious words flowed out of his mouth were because of his relationship with you. May every one of our officers share from the depth of their experience with Jesus the uh, influence of Christ with others. Help them use their influence in a positive way, not a negative way. Help them recognize their high calling in Jesus. And Father, too, I think of the 23 countries of this division. And Lord, it's an amazing division. And I just pray that we could keep focused on the preaching of the gospel, the preaching Amen. of the three angels' message, because Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, then the end shall come. And Father and Lord, I pray too that you would be with our spiritual fathers, Dr. Solomon Maposa, 
Dr. Gideon Remick, uh, Brother Kumba. Lord, I just pray for these three officers, our um, president, our secretary, and our CFO. Lord, keep them in health, keep them in strength, keep them in encouragement, and keep them, Lord, looking to what you can do. Help them to know that the power of the Holy Spirit is the greatest power in the world, and that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can see lives changed in this generation. Amen. So, Lord, keep us focused on, on preaching the gospel. May we never drift away from our experience with you. May we never lose our high calling and help us rise to our destiny and be everything you want us to be throughout Africa. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. It was a blessing to be with you today. Uh, before I let you go, may you please give a last final message for an employee for the employees of SID? I'm more than honored to. My dear brothers and sisters, whatever you are going through in your life at this very moment, Christ is there. COVID-19 has not caught Jesus by surprise. He's planned for it ahead of time. Look for opportunities to share his love. And may you take this time too to draw closer to him so that when he comes again, you can be ready to go home with him forever. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Mark Finlay. It was a pleasure to be with you. And uh, my, uh, let's say, blessing to you is that uh, may God continue to bless you abundantly, your ministry, your family, and anyone hearing your message. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you, Siri. Bye-bye.